We are born in a state of purity. Unable to walk or even crawl, we have no choice but to completely trust in the universe. As we grow older, our mind is molded by the system we live in. We are raised to believe that happiness and satisfaction lie somewhere external from us. Some of us search for happiness from food, some from sex, others from drugs. Looking to such things for happiness does not make someone a bad person. Real joy can be felt in the moment we partake in those sweet attachments. But the joy is not lasting. With the highs come the lows. We cry both tears of happiness and sadness. If we can return to a state of purity, a state of trust in the universe like when we were helpless and crawling babies, without a doubt, there will be lasting peace. Sometimes the stalk of the flower must give way if a gust of wind comes. Sometimes the flower must bend with the wind. But ultimately, the flower must snap back if it is to grow straight. It's okay to bend, as long as we always snap back. Patience is necessary for the development of one's inner being. And that can be challenging in this world of instant gratification. Everything is fast in modern times. From fast food, to fast weight loss, fast cars, fast learning, fast profits. We must slow down if we are to see the truth. There is a beacon shining within the heart. A subtle life force flowing through all things at every moment. It needs no label. Just feel it. The divinely wise ones have said that all things perish but this, that every moment comes and goes, but this stays. They say it cannot be fully comprehended unless we become one with it, and we cannot become one with it unless we take on its qualities of selflessness. There have existed people who became one with the universe. They learned the subtle reality of the world and the essence of the creative word, be. By removing selfishness and living for the well-being of those around them, they realized the wealth of abundance within, and they mended the world with their heavenly wisdom. We are born pure. As life passes, wealth and titles tempt man. The pure message of oneness is altered and corrupted in order to serve some worldly agenda. Divinely wise ones did not preach a message of my religion and your religion. Their message was simple and powerful. There is only one truth. All things fade, but the truth remains. In this world there is so much separation. There is my race and your race my political party and your political party, mine and yours, I and you, separation and duality. When a child of this system seeks truth, they find themselves at the doorstep of organizations who advertise that they seek truth, yet they support sectarianism. And yet, the Creator has no sect. The friend is beyond the disputes and the disagreements of sects. An illustration. There are two people in a dark room. An elephant is brought in and they are told to touch it and guess what it is. The first man touches the tail and says it's a snake. The second man touches the ear and says it's some kind of fan. They're both touching an elephant, but they're feeling from different perspectives. If only they had light they could see the truth as it is. The aim of all the major religions is the same, but we get caught up in the differences, in the rituals, the religious attire, the incense, but there is no fragrance like the fragrance of the friend. We shall pay any price 
bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Every thoughtful citizen who despairs of war and wishes to bring peace should begin by looking inward, by examining his own attitude towards the possibilities of peace. Too many of us think it is impossible. Too many think it is unreal. But that is a dangerous, defeatist belief. It leads to the conclusion that war is inevitable, that mankind is doomed, that we are gripped by forces we cannot control. We need not accept that view. Our problems are man-made. Therefore, they can be solved by man. And man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. Man's reason and spirit have often solved the seemingly unsolvable. And we believe they can do it again. Surely the opening vistas of space promise high costs and hardships, as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer, to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who move forward, and so will space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. The energy, the faith, the devotion, which we bring to this endeavor, will light our country and all who serve it. And so, my fellow Americans, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. The flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. There's only one word to describe the picture here, and that's grief. What was it that moved this nation so much? It's youth, grace, beauty, hope, promise. As history goes on, it will stay a very prominent part of its history. It's never going to fade. It is never going to fade.